Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about a federal district judge knocking down the Golden State's magazine ban. Saddle up, this is a bit of a journey. SB Tactical, the originator of the pistol stabilizing brace, set the bar for innovation and product development in the PDW pistol category. From the insanely popular SBM4 to the adjustable SBA3 and even kits for pump action firearms, SB Tactical braces are available for a wide variety of firearm platforms in fixed, adjustable, and side folding models. To get 15% off your legally transported and carried pistol braces, use the code TGC15 over at sb-tactical.com. Late last week, Judge Benitez of the United States District Court in the Southern District of California granted a motion for summary judgment, declared that California Penal Code Section 32310 was unconstitutional, and blocked the state from enforcing it. Section 32310 stated in part that any person who manufactures or causes to be manufactured, imports into the state, keeps for sale, or offers or exposes for sale, or anyone who gives, lends, buys, or receives any large capacity magazine is punishable by imprisonment in a county jail not exceeding one year. It also stated that starting on July 1, 2017, any person who possesses any large capacity magazine, regardless of when it was acquired, is guilty of an infraction or misdemeanor, punishable by fine not to exceed $100 per magazine, which could also result in imprisonment for up to one year or both. The court began its analysis using the test spelled out by the Supreme Court in Heller. The right to keep and bear arms is a right enjoyed by law-abiding citizens to have arms that are not unusual in common use for lawful purposes like self-defense. Put another way, the only questions that need to be asked are 1. Is the firearm hardware commonly owned? 2. Is the hardware commonly owned by law-abiding citizens? And 3 is the hardware owned by those citizens for lawful purposes? If the answer to those questions is yes, the analysis is over. Applying that test to section 32310, Judge Benitez found that the law did not pass the Heller test. But rest assured, California was not gonna roll over so quickly on that issue. The state argued that the Heller test does not apply to historically accepted prohibitions on Second Amendment rights. The opinion noted that detachable magazines were a product of the 19th century, and it was not until 1990 that the first law was passed which dealt with capacity limits of detachable magazines, and that happened in New Jersey. Eight other states subsequently passed similar laws. There was also the Federal Assault Weapons Ban in 1994, which has since expired and not been renewed. I'd bet a number of you weren't even born when that went into effect. The court outright rejected the other arguments advanced by the state in relation to this line of argument, finding that there was no historical pedigree to support such a claim. The court also determined that under any form of heightened scrutiny test, such as strict or intermediate scrutiny, the magazine ban would fail. Which brings us to the tripartite binary test with sliding scale and reasonable fit test. What the f is this? Believe me, I wish I were kidding. As the opinion states, in other words, there are three different two-part tests after which a sliding scale scrutiny is selected. It's an overly complex analysis that people of ordinary intelligence cannot be expected to understand. Hell, I went to law school and I'm not even sure what it means. The three two-part tests are burden and scrutiny, presumptively lawful or historical regulation, and closeness to the core and severity of the burden. Kind of sounds like a Jeopardy episode. Back again, Burt Reynolds in a commanding lead with $14. Hey, hey, uh, check out the podium, look at this. Mr. Reynolds has apparently changed his name to Turd Ferguson. The court had already determined that Section 32310 burdened Second Amendment conduct. It also determined that a complete ban on ammunition magazines of any size is not one of the presumptively lawful regulatory measures identified in Heller nor was there any evidence that magazine capacity restrictions have a historical pedigree. Lastly, the court found that the law struck at the core of the Second Amendment. The Ninth nice Circuit has said that a law that imposes such a severe restriction on the fundamental right of self-defense of the home that it amounts to a destruction of the Second Amendment right is unconstitutional under any level of scrutiny. 
The court found that to be the case here. However, that did not end the analysis. Judge Benitez continued down the sliding scale in order to ensure the opinion covered all possible angles, a law that implicates the core of the Second Amendment right and severely burdens that right warrants strict scrutiny. The court determined that a law like Section 32310 that prevents a law-abiding citizen from obtaining a firearm with enough rounds to defend self, family, and property in and around the home certainly implicates the core of the Second Amendment. When a person has fired the permitted 10 rounds and the danger still persists, a statute limiting magazine size to only 10 rounds severely burdens that core right to self-defense. Remember, strict scrutiny requires the government to prove that the restriction on a constitutional right furthers a compelling interest and is narrowly tailored to achieve that interest. According to the court, the state has not offered a compelling interest for the ban, arguing that intermediate scrutiny should be the test. And Section 32310 is not narrowly tailored. It's not tailored at all. It fits like a burlap bag. It's a single-dimensional, prophylactic blanket thrown across the population of the state. Judge Benitez found that Section 32310 did not pass constitutional muster under a strict scrutiny analysis. Which then brings us a step back to intermediate scrutiny which is a lesser standard. Under intermediate scrutiny, the government's stated objective must be significant, substantial, or important, and there must be a reasonable fit between the challenged regulation and that asserted objective. California identified four important interests. One, protecting citizens from gun violence. Two, protecting law enforcement from gun violence. Three, protecting the public safety. And four, preventing crime. Put another way, under intermediate scrutiny, the court was left to determine whether Section 32310's ban on magazines holding more than 10 rounds was a reasonable fit for achieving those important goals. The court determined that the ban was not, finding that at best, the statute was ungainly and very loose. Lastly, the court analyzed the statute in relation to the takings clause. At a very basic level, the takings clause is to prevent government seizure of property without just compensation. It determined that while the law gave individuals several options, such as the surrender of the magazines to law enforcement, sale of the magazine to a dealer, or removal from the state, that ultimately, not only would the state deprive an individual of the use of the property, but also the possession of it. Thus, whatever might be the state's authority to ban the sale or use of magazines over 10 rounds, the takings clause prevents it from compelling the physical disposition of such lawfully acquired private property without just compensation. Simply put, the government would need to compensate you for taking your stuff. Judge Benitez concludes, this decision was a freedom calculus decided long ago by colonists who cherished individual freedom more than subservient security of a British ruler. The freedom they fought for was not free of cost then, and it is not free now. Now, I know what you all want to know, but Adam, but, 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 Adam. Is it legal for me to buy, sell, ship, or import a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds into California? And that's gonna be a question for your lawyer to answer. However, I can tell you that currently there's a number of companies selling and shipping 30 round magazines into California. By the time this episode airs, I'd expect that the state would have appealed the decision to the Ninth Circuit and have asked for a stay on the injunction pending appeal. There are also a number of questions as to the legal situation of a person who may have bought, sold, shipped, or imported magazines that hold more than 10 rounds into California while the injunction was in place if a stay is implemented by the Ninth Circuit. Time will tell if I'm wrong on that guess. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out, hit that like button, make sure you share it around with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed. If you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. Be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast on iTunes, and as always, thanks for watching. This decision is a freedom calculus decided long ago by Colonius. Colonius. Yeah, Colonius. That's not a word. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, what? He's serious. Let him go. <laughs> Colonius. Dude, you come up with like a great whole... words. I know. I have my own language. We'll call it I, I atomism. Somebody, I can't even remember. I can't, there was a good one that kept going for a while. For like a good six months, I kept saying it. I'm sure Izzy. I'm sure Izzy would know. Just drop it in the bloopers. <laughs> Majoral. Yeah, Majoral. That's a new Majoral. word. Majoral. <laughs> the National Firearms Act in 1934 was the first Majoral... <laughs> That's not even a word! Majoral! <laughs> Majoral! <laughs> <laughs> well, we're off to a good start. I hope he's saving these. I hope not.